and I don't even know how I got accepted. It, it just happened that I took the right steps. It wasn't me, it was God, actually. So even though you feel like you're not rocking with him, he's always pushing you into the direction. When you catch wind of his direction, that's when you know everything is going straight. And sometimes you might not even know you're like walking his line until like you realize like I couldn't have done this on my own. One of my favorite quotes is don't miss out on something that could be great just because you thought so difficult. And we always think about the difficulties before going into something. It's like that's the first thing that comes into our mind. It's like this is going to be difficult for me to achieve. Maybe I should take a different route when the route is right in front of you. So always keep in mind to push forward even though it's very difficult. A, full, a head full of air has no space for the drinks. And this topic is about failure. We all fail. Failure is has been taken out of context many times because failure means that you were unable to achieve or accomplish some things. And you feel like that's the end actually, but it's not. So as we think, I put on um, some random guys t-shirts by Well on Mother Daughter's tour. So we were in Ireland and we just came from St. Patrick's Cathedral. I was a tour guide. And when we were walking toward going to, um, to get something to eat, and my mom is like stretching her head back towards the bed. I'm like, mommy, what are you looking at? Like, it's not even a church she's looking at. She's looking at this guy. I'm like, I have to, am I supposed to be on someone that's like, not to die or something? Like, I'm really <laughs> so I'm like, mommy, how did you like write this on my ticket? I was like, right now, what? Like, what are you seeing? Like, I'm trying to see what she's seeing. Like, I had to pull a bed and I hold a head full of drinks. And she's like, what are you looking at? I'm like, a head full of bed and I hold a head full of drinks. And as we walked, we tried to discuss it and like figure out like the context of this quote, a head full of bears and not whole, a head full of dreams. If we continue through life with being fearful, how are we going to pursue our dreams? How are we going to fulfill our purpose that God created us for if we continue on with fear because of failure? And bears come with failure, but you might have bears before failure, but you can always get through it. The mother guard car was awesome. I learned a lot of things. You, you guys should do that. When they're older, when you're younger, it's like it's restless because I want to play with my friends or meet new people who are young. Like, I don't want to go on a tour with you guys. Like, I have no interest in them. Like, please leave me alone. <laughs> So I guess they caught on and they were like, okay, we would go, yeah, up to him, switch on, you stay home, you go, we go. I mean, I understood that. And then when we grow older, it's like, oh, touring is actually awesome. But not between the ages of three to oh, maybe, okay, no, 14. 16. Yeah, I don't, yeah, you have to go higher because we still don't break. 16. We're still going to talk like, okay. Yeah. 16. <laughs> Thank you, 17. After 17, take us on all the tours. You will be so joyful. You're going to be like, this is some information for life. Thank you so much. But before that, we're just like, we can sit down and drink some water, ice cream, something. It's too hot. Okay, now we're going to continue on. <laughs> <laughs> to circle making. So lately, I have been receiving emails from this inspirational guy, and he really wanted to impact the lives of children because right now, in this, the millennium generation, when you graduate, we don't know if you're going to have jobs. But I don't know. I don't I hear you. I Amen. To be Amen. But so I signed up for this. Um, we wake them um, points daily and we would send them out and speak into our lives. And one of the topics that struck me and I think that I will continue to use as I continue my journey in life is circle maker. So he basically stated that you need about five people in your life and that makes up your circle. And these are some attributes that they are they better than you? 
and then going where you're going, and then engine or anchor. And it's a hard choice to make, like you have to reevaluate who your um, acquaintances are. And you have to begin today. You have to act today. Because it, it, it loses you. You you may hang around with certain people and you gotta attach them because you're used to it. You're comfortable. And when you're comfortable, it's hard to break away from it. So try not to be comfortable. It's not something that you want to always think about, like you don't want to meet somebody and continue to think like, okay, they can't help me nice. You might be able to gain something from them for like three minutes. Some people are like three meeting, three minutes meeting people. You meet them for three minutes and you can't see them again. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. you have people in your life that are just there for three minutes, none the less no more. And keep moving. And then you have people who are there for a lifetime, people who are there for an hour, people who are there for a half an hour. It all depends on the timing and the way God designed it for you to have it. And then a quote that also um, helps with circle maker is the people with whom you choose to associate is more important in determining your success or failure or any, than any other single factor in life. And it is true. I think it's it. The people with whom you choose to associate is more important in determining your success or failure than any other single factor in life. These are some of the things that you should look for and what you shouldn't look for when making up your circle. You may, uh, I wouldn't consider parents as being in your circle because they are your backbone, your They have to be there. Everything. So find people who can go around that circle that you already have because you have attached parents on each side and you need people to surround you. So you would want to look for and speak positive words into your life, support your ambition. Give constructive feedback and be objective about this feedback. Be influential in your life. Be balanced. You mean know, be balanced spiritually, be balanced mentally, intelligent wise, and nurturing. Sometimes you need nurturing people in your circle because we're not all strong and we may have some weaknesses. And you just want somebody who embodies positivity. And some of the things that you should look for are who take from you consistently. Complainers, battles for everything, everything. Everything is a fight. One word is a thought and they're ready to fight. You know, with words or face, rude comments about everything, negative opinions, irrational behavior, waste of valuable time. So who is really down for you? Who is in your circle? Think about it day in and day out. And think about who is in your circle, who is going to help to create what you want to do in life. Have a life goal base. So now it's goal time. If you have um, a sheet of paper, can you take that and start writing? Yes, over time. Really easy. Oh, you can also write it in your notes. You're allowed to use phone, so I'm not saying. In the notes section, or in a text message, you can send it to us as a text message as well. So, goal. A goal is nothing more than a dream for the time. Like, that we speak about goals. No, I'm going to tell you what to write down. Can you go to the next slide, please? Okay, so you're going to write down the outline. What are your goals in these areas? And write down spiritual, relationship, financial, career, and health. And then you're going to write just a couple of words, it could be one word about where do you see yourself in the next five, 10, 20 years with these goals. And next yeah, week in charge, we're going to have an actual um, printout for you. And I'm going to print two for each person. And you're going to write one for yourself and write one for you to file the chart and we're going to pray over it. And you can always come, if you lost yours, you can come back and it will be here at church. Um, 
The first one is spiritual. The second one is relationship. Wait, and this can encompass um, relationship with parents, with God, with family members, spouse, children. Like it encompasses all relationships. Like where, what type of home are you setting for your relationships? With any financially, the third one is financial. Career. I think she's resizing it so you guys can see. And after financial is career. And the five is health. And so you can do like sketch, whatever. You can help, help. And then next week we will help them and get those out to you guys. You'll have two copies. You both do them at both and then you give one back to me and we'll pray over them and have it on file at church. I don't want to say it's so scary on the fact that like, there are doctors on this You have to take your goals seriously. Five, ten, twenty years from now, whatever you see yourself. Sometimes goals don't take, it's like a time. Sometimes it takes five minutes to reach a goal, five minutes. It does. Sometimes it does. Five minutes, five years, ten years, twenty years. It's a time thing. It's how far you can go and achieve that goal. So, some tips in setting goals. How do you look okay at goals? How do you find out why you are here on earth? And when you ask yourself these questions, I really think when I ask myself these questions, I'm usually talking to God because He's the only person that knows my purpose here on earth. Therefore, he can, He's the only one with the answer. I direct your So we're going to set the goals and go to the Okay, Pastor wants me to redefine what goals is, so I will redefine what goals is for them. A goal is nothing more than a dream with a time limit. Time being key components. Now I'm going to speak about explore and experience. And those words to me mean inhale and exhale. I explore when I explore I inhale. I'm taking a deep breath of contact of experience. If anything that happens during that exploration period, adventure. And during the experience process is my exhale moment. I'm, I'm filled with knowledge. I'm able to understand the outlook of different perspectives. And I really learned a lot about that after um, my second semester in college, where I was like, okay, I'm in Vermont. I don't know how I got here, but I'm here and I'm alone and I don't want to be here at all. And I didn't want to not continue with school because every time you drop something it's like really hard to get back on it so i found something that would allow me to gain college credit and i would i took the semester off and i think that was like the best decision i ever made in my life even though it was a very expensive decision but god is able to do this above yeah yeah so my experience, um, my junior, first semester of my junior year, I went back to Vermont, but I didn't go back to school. I decided that I wanted to build a tiny house. And when people heard that I wanted to build a tiny house, they were like, you, glamorous Leon? I'm like, I could be two people, okay, I could be glamorous, and I could knock in some wood, you know? 
Yeah, I feel like I could go ways. I could look beautiful and I could still not go. You don't have to right. strip your exterior to do something that you want. That's right, that's right. And so I found joy in hammering nails and writing about different types of wood and how to build an um, efficient, sustainable house. And throughout these building blocks in this semester program, I was with God the entire time. If I was in a mountain, it was like the best place to build a house. In a valley, the mountains were high. I could wake up and look out straight to the mountains. It was gorgeous. And God and I built a connection as I built a house. It was awesome. It was like every step of the way, he was there giving me steps to build a house. And I found what I wanted to do in life. I mean, in this program, and I never thought I would want to see myself in a, a building house like those yellow hats. I think that would look good in one. Yes. Maybe with something from a hand on my foot. You know, maybe if I have some fun. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yes. I can walk it. Yeah. So I want to build. I don't, and I don't I, like. I found out that maybe I'm not too good at the tools and everything else, but I learned it and I was able to gain the knowledge. But now I understand that even though you try something and going back on failure, like you try it and you were like, okay, I learned this, so why don't I know it and why don't I like it? That doesn't mean that you don't like it or not. It, in life, there are so much different routes and skills that you can take for one option. And with this option that I took with building, a tiny house, I was able to understand that I don't like building and like telling people what to build. I like directing and, and being the, the talker and saying where things go. So management, management. I could build, I could build, yeah, the cabinets or, you know, I could make the kitchen new and brand new. I wouldn't be building, I would be telling people how to do it all. And I don't think I'm like an interior designer or exterior designer. I'm think I'm like in encompassing of everything. Yes, I wouldn't even call myself a contractor. I'm like I'm I'm over a contractor. What is over? You're the consultant. Just consult. I I think I'm bigger than an engineer too. Listen. <laughs> I'm just like yeah. Yeah. I don't make my own. That's what you have to do now. You have to make, to make project manager. Own. And then people will be like, the project manager manage all of those facets. Yeah. Project manager. And after this experience, I, I, again, I was like, I don't want to go under the wash. I don't want to go to the man. It's cold. Why would I even take it coming in? Like, it is really cold. Winters are brutal, you and they don't end. It's like the sun trying to come up. The sun is out, at, like it's out for style. It's not doing anything. It's just shining, and you walk in. It's like it's in one, and you you breathe in, and you can hardly breathe. I was like, I cannot go back to this place. I cannot, and it, it's very secular, so it was hard. Um, getting to church, and I had a really nice church family, and they. They, they couldn't even handle it. They had to leave because I was like the only person coming to church. So they decided that they had to go to a different state to accomplish God's work. But I really wish they stayed because I felt like they were getting to what they felt otherwise. So making my decision not to go back to Vermont, my only option was either coming home, and that was a no. And then my other decision was to study abroad. And I know one of the reasons why I chose the school, Champlain College in Vermont, is because of the, 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 they have two there's three campuses, one in Vermont, one in Canada, Montreal, Canada, and one in Dublin, Ireland. And I was like, oh, that would be so cool to study abroad. But knowing that I just spent so much money at this semester, uh, I was like, I can't. I can't do this to me, my parents. It's too much. And I was like quiet, not making any decisions for a while. And then my friend called me and she was like, 
you do in the study of our experience? I was like, no, you don't think great. They're killing me because I'm like, you're telling me to do something. I was like, I don't have to do anything today. And she was, she was just like, I don't know if in her spirit she felt that she needed to tell me this, but she continued talking about it. And then I spoke with my mom and she's like, this is why he chose the school. You should go ahead and do it. And I was like, yeah, but maybe not this time, maybe another time. Because I feel when in 10th grade, I previously went to Greece and Italy and I felt like, okay, I went to Bali. And it was like I got an email that day after speaking with my mom, and it said, um, applications are beginning to go out for the study abroad. And I said, okay, I need to go out. And I was speaking with my former roommate, and we were supposed to room together. So I'm excited now, okay, I'm going to do this. And then right when they accepted me, I emailed my roommate because right now I'm still at the the um, semester back, at the in Vermont at the tiny house building while the selection is going on. And they accepted me. And now I'm texting my roommate asking, so I got accepted. Are we still in together? No answer. I'm like, okay. I text her. Facebook her every way I could find her. I did, and I got no reply. I'm like, she just read my message on Facebook because Facebook is now telling you who reads the message. Thank the Lord. So I'm like, why isn't she? I don't know. I'm like getting upset because I'm like, I don't have anybody to room with. She she lined it down, and I really have to look within myself. And I was like. She don't own you. She don't control your life or where you're going. You don't need somebody to be next to you to achieve anything. You came into the world by yourself. Either you were the twin or not. You was the pet by yourself. You came out in visually. So I emailed her one more time. And she sent back, oh, I'm sorry. Somebody else wanted to move with them. And they just tricked me into doing it. And I was like, trick you into doing it? I was like, who does she think she's speaking to? Like, I couldn't even use this at this time. I was like, no, mm. she can't think. She missed, she mistakenly, mistakenly, because of my best, obviously. So, how would someone trick you or made you sign up with them? When you, she's the one who seek me out to be roommate now. I didn't ask her. She seek me out. So, I think if you seek me out, then everything going the right way. But obviously, it wasn't. And when I got, I figured out my roommate situation. It wasn't the, the ideal one, but everything works the way it's supposed to work. And the, the Sunday, I got in the Thursday, the Friday, when I was late, as I was, I'm always the last person to reach any place when traveling abroad. Even to Vermont, I can never reach to school on the designated day because different situations. Jesus help us. It's not their fault. It's not their fault. Amen. And so the Sunday we and then I'm like, and she's like, oh, hey, we should pull. I'm like, okay, we should pull. Let's pull. And so she we went to eat, and she's like sitting down, and she, she's one of the kind of people who just like tells you everything, doesn't hold back nothing. So she's talking, and she's like, we ended up on the topic of roommates. And now this is a touchy topic for me because I was like, you. Tell me this God trick you into being your roommate and now you complaining about that. Hmm, I wonder why. And I just sat there and listened to her and I was like, I have me being the kind of person I have, I don't hold my thing. I cannot mean to do that sometimes, but I don't. And so she began to talk about the, the roommate situation. And it's this is Sunday. B was going through orientation. Classes have not even begun. So if she's coming with a roommate situation, I'm like, Hmm. I wonder if we were roommates, would you be having this problem? 
for that was me being had to say, Lord, forgive me, please forgive my God. So I was, I told her, I was like, so how are you going to get through this? What are you going to do? She's like, well, I guess I have to stay through it, through it and figure it out. I was like, well, of course you do. Because this is what you chose. So we can't complain about things that we choose when we had options. I don't even remember what this is you can't complain about things when you have options. But you choose. You made a final decision. Yes. You choose to live with the decision. So just me saying a story, I believe you, you can't be afraid of transition. And we don't need to be afraid of what may be right for what may be right for us is not right for others. And as I go through my journey in life and especially college, you learn that because certain things that you may be interested in, your friends may not be interested in. I thought I would be going to college with like all my friends from high school. And I'm like the only person from St. Thomas in my school. And that's a good thing. Oh no, we have another one from Antilles. Yes. Oh, let me think of the story. So he is from Antilles. And he, I, I don't even know his name. But somebody else told me, oh, you have another person from Antilles. I was like, okay. I didn't meet him until like later on in my software. But people continuously used to come to me and be like, you have anything on you? I was like, anything on me? Like, what is anything on me? Like, I was confused. I mean, somebody freaked out, like, you have any weed? I was like, oh, oh. So, because I come from the Thailand, I sell him. I was like, how much, how much do y'all make? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> curious. How much do y'all make? And so I figured out that they thought because both of us from that, because he was selling. So then everybody thought that I was selling. And I was like, oh, oh, links. But I linked to him, so I linked to him. Yeah, I like that one so <laughs> I go pray for the money. No, no, no. So now we are reaching to my favorite childhood scripture, and it's taken from Ecclesiastes, like the um the first one we read. And this one says, "Remember now, you're creating the things of your days." And I first heard this topic when this is says true. Iona, when this is true, this used to be like the day after the day. Um. And we 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 discussed this topic and it really resonated with me throughout my life as I continue like I was like, this is my favorite scripture. Remember now you're created in the days of your youth. So I want to remember forever because I'm youthful forever. Go ahead, girl. I'm 21 by the way. Um, we could read the scripture together. It's still too small. Remember now your creator in the days of your youth. While the evil days come not, nor the years draw near, when you shall say, I have no pleasure in them. Put your faith and trust in God in your youth, and God will not fail you. So ending now, I just wanted to state that the places you will go, it's been an amazing journey thus far, and I feel like I'm unstoppable. I told, I, well, no, I told my mom she's my best friend, but she won't forget me. But 
So I told her, like, I was explaining to her, like, I want to do everything. And I was trying to understand what I was saying to myself. I was like, I want to do everything. And I've been saying that for a while. But I'm like, how is it possible to do everything? Like, am I going to find something that I really like in the transition between doing everything? And she was like, and I was like, are people going to look at me and like, she, she just picking up everything and she's dropping it and picking it up. Like, is she going to find something like, that is really for her? And my mom was like, what do you say? You said you can't do everything. You're like, how? Oh. And she's like, sometimes people don't understand where you're going. And that's okay. It's not for them to understand. It's for you to understand and for you to understand where God is taking you. And I let that speak to me and I understand that. I am going to do everything. It might take me two years, three years, it's a year to do everything that I want to do, that I want to do. It may not be what everybody else wants me to do, but it's what God and I have spoken about for me to do. And so the places you will go, don't hold yourself back because your friend might not be going with you. Don't hold yourself back because you might not be having the support that you need. Find support through God. And hopefully your parents. I, this is what I do. I ask, sometimes I, I try to analyze, psychoanalyze my parents. So I would say something and just like state it. Don't talk about it, just state it. Let them figure out in their head, like see that the wheels turn it. And then maybe come back two days, three days later, say it again, and then discuss it, yeah. and see what they say about it, and then say what I feel about it. So that's how we've been discussing things lately. Figuring out like, how you feel about this, and then how I feel about this, and then together we could make a decision towards being in life towards your journey life. So you have to talk about things. Sometimes and not talk about things with everybody. You have to like go back to the circle maker. Five people. It may be more, it may be less. But five people who are influential and supporting your ambition, supporting your dreams, and praying for you, not talking about you, but praying for you. They have a concern about your life, they come to you directly, speak to you about it, pray for you. Go your separate ways, continue to pray for you. Let's begin to Zamalia sometimes. Oh, be me like a Susan, yeah, be me. But Let's pray for No, I don't pray for me. You come to me and pray for me with you. <laughs> so just be careful with who you speak your dreams with. Make sure that you're speaking to the right people so that people can help in pushing you in the direction that you need to be pushed into. So back to all of the places you were going. So we were giving this book, My Senior Year, graduating from 12th grade. And I was like, they're giving us this Dr. baby book, all the places you will go. And I read that book and I cry. I, but that, when, it, when they first gave it to me, this, it was this week? Yes, it was this week, Monday. I was cleaning out my room and I opened the book. And I read the Dr. Seuss book and cry. I was like, why am I shutting tears right now? Sit, sit before the door. It was, it's deep, <laughs> especially after like you have went through certain things and you're on your continuously on your journey and then you read the book and you're like, this is what's happening. And going places, finding love, taking maybe wrong roads, right roads, finding roads that I need to go on, but I'm always going to stay straight. And Dr. Sam so probably wasn't like the best like man, but like he was connected kind of to something. Like that. That one. So, okay. all of the places you will go. She's still a trust in my book. You guys should read it. It's on my book today. Well, I bring my copy to try it. But it's a, it's a child's book, but it's really, really deep and influential. And, Life's journey. So, to end with all the places you will go, some key things that I think 
will help you on your journey in life is when you're creative, speak with him. Have conversations. You could be driving, you could be in school, writing, and you might need help with doing something, and you just talk to him. And things are just revealed to you. Sometimes you have conversations and he's like, oh, that's why. Or, oh, that's the way it was supposed to go. And it just drops in your story because you're now connected to him because you're having a conversation with him. We don't, we just expect to just go on about life without talking to him and just think out everything we can. But we have to have a conversation. It's fun. Sometimes we might need to change direction, but that might not be fun, but it needs to happen. And be ready for change. You're continuously changing, developing. You're not going to stay the same. You can't stay the same. So much things influence you as you go about your day. It's impossible to stay one way. And if you stay one way, you're not helping yourself or other people around you. And adapt. Adapt to situations that may not be so suitable for you or for you at that time, you think. But I think once you adapt and God shows you the way, then anything is possible. That's right. And my last one is mold. Allow him to mold you like your container to shape you into the things of God. And I have this quote that I want to read for mold. You belong to a patient God, not a hurry up and fix it God, but a be still and let me heal you God. Not a why do you keep doing this, God, but a God who gives you the peace to break the cycle. A God is patient and he is pleased to take his hand with you. So allow him to mold you into the things of God, into the things that he wants you to be and bless people with. So 